Uh, my name is Doug Gebert. Uh, I'm here from HP, obviously. A wonderful slide. I'm an enterprise architect, uh, and I'm in the federal pre-sales team. I'm the deputy CTO of the DISA accounts. Uh, so pretty much anything that goes in and out of DISA, uh, I get involved with. We're gonna talk about the new style of IT. On the outside, you saw it was uh, software-defined infrastructure for the DOD mission. And so what we uh, are gonna go through here is what do we mean by SDI? What do we mean by new style of IT? And then, of course, uh, how do we support the DOD mission from an HP perspective? I wanna make this very interactive, obviously pretty small. If you have any questions, just interrupt me along the way, raise your hand, I'll be happy to answer as we go along. So in terms of what we're looking at at the, uh, the new style of IT, we have our traditional IT, where the driver has constantly been lower cost. You know, we're looking at an IT-centric outcome. We're running conventional apps and workloads, very old school, maybe even some mainframe in there. And there's long cycle times. And that doesn't refer to the actual product development, so your application development or your database development, but actually acquiring IT. It takes extremely long. You've got to bid your servers, and then you've got to get it installed, and you've got to get it certified, and then you've got to get it deployed. So moving into the new style IT, we see that as being the, the bridging the gap is software-defined infrastructure. So I'll get to what software-defined infrastructure is, but in terms of the new style IT, what we're looking for is greater agility, a business-centric outcome versus an IT-centric outcome. We're still gonna be including lower costs through all this, but instead of having our long cycle times, we wanna get to short cycle times, reducing cost, and achieving that agility that we're looking for. And of course, we're looking at all the new apps, workloads, and experiences that come along with this modern IT, this, this you know, cloud 2.0, if you wanna call it, as we get along through everything. So in terms of what we see is uh, the budget spend is 64% is spent on maintaining your current IT budget. And that's a, sort of a general number. If you look at it in the DOD perspective, it's probably quite a bit more in maintaining traditional IT infrastructure. And that really only leaves about 36% in terms of what's available to invest in your new infrastructure. And so that's an extremely limiting factor. And we're trying to work uh, from our perspective to increase the ability to actually invest in new infrastructure, in the new style of IT. So what is software-defined infrastructure? It's really a, a global sort of catch-all, an umbrella. Uh, and it, it stands for uh, the software-defined data center, uh, which includes all of your sort of software-defined XXX, right? So compute, storage, networking, security, facilities. And at the very bottom there, you see infrastructure outside the data center. So that can include anything from sensor data that you're pulling in, from uh, the Internet of Things, for example, or it could also include external clouds, right? So all of this is talking about how to define at a software-defined level to programmatically interact with your infrastructure so that you can program it like it was a, 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 massive, uh, a massive computer, really, and then have your lowered agility, you know, create a system that you need on fly, you know, deploy a firewall, deploy a load balancer, deploy a new system, and then redeploy it as fast as you can in order to keep up with uh, all the demands of your business. So SDI, it's not a single product. It's not something you can buy. It's not something we're actually selling, right? It's more of a journey. It, it's something that you're, you're, you're seeking to achieve as a part of the new style of IT. So for customers, it's a, it's a process to evolve their infrastructures to a future SDI state. So how to get from your traditional IT infrastructure into the state where you can actually program your infrastructure so that you can achieve all the things that have always been talked about in terms of cloud uh, and, and rapid management and lower your, uh, your, your, your admins to your servers or increase your admins to your servers, I should say. You know, how do you get to that 800 servers to one server ad admin. You're not gonna achieve that in traditional IT infrastructure. The only way you're gonna achieve that is by going to an SDI style infrastructure. So in terms of how you get there, the way HP sees this is the first thing you have to do is you have to transform to an on-demand infrastructure. And what we mean by that is that the on-demand infrastructure is something that you can respond to rapidly. So you have existing capacity. Maybe it's not a ton of capacity, but there is a buffer of capacity already exists in your enterprise, and you can activate that whenever you need it. And you can also roll it back out if, if, if someone ha uh, returns the services or returns the systems back to the, the pool. So the capacity pool, the storage pool, the network pool, right? So transferring the on-demand infrastructure is the first step. But the second key step is if you've enabled your, on your infrastructure to be on-demand and you've got this great agility, this rapid ability to, to scale, if you haven't enabled your, your workplace, your employees, in order to uh, utilize that infrastructure, in order to be able to rapidly take advantage of that in order to do things as a service, then you're not gonna really achieve the kind of numbers, the kind of ratios that you're looking for. So for example, if you move to an on-demand infrastructure but your IT department is still trouble ticket based, you know, someone has to call in and place a call and say, I need my computer fixed, right? What you wanna get to is where they can use a self-service portal to solve most of their, their common issues and you only wanna get to 
a person that needs to provide them with assistance if it's necessary. And that's how you're gonna get your ratios down. So empowering a data enterprise to accelerate growth, that has to do with all of the massive data we're looking at today. So your Hadoops, your, 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 your massive clusters of information data, your, your, your data warehousing applications. So we, we see that as being a separate piece of the infrastructure as, as sitting off to the side because things that process Hadoop, that's a very specialized uh, infrastructure. Things that do data warehousing, it's a specialized infrastructure. To make that run fast, to get it from, instead of doing the batch, uh, the batch workloads of the previous day, uh, where it would take, you know, you'd have to run something overnight in order to get analysis out of it. Well, today you can do that in less than a minute, right? Instead of having to write a query to, to define a system in order to search for a particular set of, of customers that you want to target for your, for your, uh, your advertising, for example. You can do that, that would take, you know, all night. Now you can do it in, in less than, you know, 30 seconds, for example, depending on what kind of system you're in here. And that's all part of that big data. And finally, securing your digital assets. So as we just saw from the cybersecurity uh, talk, you've got to make sure here that uh, as a part of you're moving into this SDI that you're, you're properly securing every piece of your workload so that you're doing data at rest security, you're doing data in transit security, but also at the same time, you're looking at the people who have access to the various pieces of your infrastructure. So for example, you want to make sure that you don't have a random person who has access to your SDI interface. So we're at the point where they could actually control pieces of the infrastructure. You want to limit your, uh, your, 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 uh, your authentication and your, 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 your roles that are out there and make sure that your system is secure at a, a cybersecurity level. So in terms of uh, what we see as the infrastructure to bridge the gap to the new style of IT, is of course you have your workloads, uh, on-demand IT infrastructure, which I just talked about. You have of course cloud, mobility, and big data. Those are all what's gonna run on top of uh, your entire system. And sorry, the slide's a little messed up here. It's, uh, looks like it got squished a little bit. Uh, the software-defined management, which is the key to SDI, the ability to interface with your hardware at a programmatic level, either that's uh, RESTful or SOAP-based access uh, or, or XML, JSON kind of interfaces. Uh, and that's what we provide in, in HP OneView. So the HP OneView is a product from HP that allows you to have a programmatic interface into our server systems. So if you want to deploy a brand new blade uh, and boot it up with RHEL 6.5, uh, attach it to a particular set of network connections, you can do that programmatically. That's not something somebody has to do in plugging cables. You can just you can write a little template, you launch it, and you know within 30 to 45 minutes, you're gonna have that system running there. Uh, in terms of the cloud, HP has HP Cloud Service Automation. And that's our, 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 our high level product that provides you with not only a private cloud interface, but the ability to burst out into the public sphere. So that's really giving you that hybrid level interface. And then of course, management extensions. So managed extensions fit in with you know, various set of products and HP is involved with a program called Redfish, which is also involved with, with Intel. And that's providing an HTTP RESTful interface into server management. So if anybody's a techie, you might know uh, IPMI. So that's the traditional kind of format that you would use, completely unsecure. Uh, it allows you to power on a server, power off a server, get some various sets of information back about it. Uh, but this new, this new model we're looking at here is providing that level of interface, but at a secure state, using multi-factor authentication, uh, in a RESTful interface that, that puts out to JSON. So you can go and query your infrastructure using an agnostic interface, using a standards open-paced API. So nothing that HP owns, Nothing that'll tie you into HP per se as, as using that set of infrastructure, but something that's gonna enable you to operate your infrastructure the way that you see fit. <clears throat> and so in terms of our converged infrastructure solutions, which is a part of what we see as getting you to the SDI, uh, we offer a series of what we call the converged style or converged systems. And the first one here, which is uh, the, the 200HC VSA and Evo rail, this is very much a focus of a virtualization solution. So these guys, uh, they're, they're what's known as hyper-converged systems. So they run a, the storage and the server in the same place along with the hypervisor at the same time. So you can scale these out and you build it out like a node. So you add a node and that gives you your compute and your storage and your networking all in one go. The Converge System 700 is a more traditional take uh, on how we're gonna expand to your storage. So it uses a, a, a enterprise class three par array along with Blade System. Converge System 500 to 900 is SAP HANA. So that's your in-memory database processing that's uh, really taken off with SAP HANA. And then of course, HP wants to make sure that you know, we're not locking you into a solution that we predefine. We want to enable you to architect your own solution using our hardware, which meets a series of standard open-based MPIs, back to the management extensions, so that if you don't want to use one of these solutions, you can still take the pieces and build your own puzzle 
but you'll still have the ability to reach up and get to the new style of IT to get that software-defined infrastructure. So who's offering software-defined infrastructures? Pretty much everybody. Uh, but the one thing about this slide, and I'm not gonna go through all the names here, is, is really the only two players that play in all the regions are HP and VMware. Right? So across all the various pieces there, uh, that's what we're, we're, uh, we're running with. So we really see this as part of, of getting SDI set up right, the entire bubble of SDI, again, to the infrastructure, network storage, compute, et cetera. We wanna make sure that to get you the new style IT, we're supporting all these new initiatives to get you to the future of where you're gonna be agile, lower cost, uh, and best practice. So SDI virtualization, cloud, and conversion. So how do all these things fit together in terms of what SDI means uh, in terms of virtualization, cloud, and convergence? So first of all, if you look at the current state of IT, uh, for most folks, everything's siloed. So you have your networking team, and they do the networking. You have your security team, they do the security. The storage team, they only sit there and provision LUNs, that's their job. Uh, and so this is, you know, in the end, this is where a lot of your, your wasted time sits, right? You have to ask, the compute gets his compute system set up, the server set up, the OS is installed, it says, okay, now I need to have my networking and my storage provisioned. Well, let me put in a ticket, wait for them to get back to me, however long it takes for them to do that work. Uh, a lot of manual processes in there, a lot, of, a lot of potential for human error. But getting to the SDI future state, again, the new style of IT, we see bringing the, <clears throat> the control layer here up to the point where your ops team is integrated, right? So you don't have individual silos anymore. You have an ops team that is the storage, is the networking, is the compute, and they all operate as a single entity uh, across your infrastructure. And so then, of course, when, when that happens, you get this ability to have uh, a, 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 com a combined programmable interface for your bare metal, for your hypervisors, for your containers, which is essentially really, really hot right now. And then, of course, that, that below that is your compute storage networking facilities. So <clears throat> what SDI is focused on is bringing that ability to program your hardware in a generic way in order for you to gain that, that agility, that, that, that necessary need to be able to launch a system when you need it. Uh, you need to do a test dev, you can spin that up. If you need to promote that to production, you, know, you can spin that into production. And then when you release that capacity, that goes back to the general pool. There isn't a process of, oh, well, let me contact storage team and let them know that, hey, I've released the storage, you can remove it now. No, that, that should be all automated. That's how you're gonna be able to achieve the proper ratios that we're talking about. So SDI and cloud, so how does SDI and cloud fit together? HP really sees this as being a, it's, it, in the end, everything's gonna be hybrid. You're never gonna always be completely in the public cloud. But at the same time, you're not gonna be able to escape your traditional IT. There's always gonna be a need to put something on bare metal hardware to achieve the best performance that you possibly need to have. There's also gonna be certain situations where you're gonna have a security model that's not gonna let you go to the cloud. You may have critical enterprise data that you're not willing to put at risk, in terms of risk management, out in the cloud. And at the same time, you have private cloud. So the combination of all three of these with a software-defined infrastructure is what's gonna comprise the hybrid cloud of the future. So SDI and convergence. So as we mentioned before, some of the converged system models that we were talking about before, there's two phases of convergence. There's converged infrastructure, which you can see is really taking the management plane of your traditional IT hardware and putting a management plane in front of your traditional IT. So making it so that you can make traditional IT programmable, so that we can make that storage programmable. So as I mentioned, you can make those servers programmable. I can attach them to the network to, to I can provision a blade without actually having to slap in cables and slide in a server. I can just do that over a programmatic interface. So that's your converged infrastructure. So that's what our converged system 700 would be like. In the hyper-converged infrastructure, which HP offers in terms of Evo Rail, which you've also seen from probably from Nutanix, which are here on site, your control and your management plane are, are now converged into a, a single entity. So all of your management, all of your control happens at the level of that particular vendor of that hyper-converged infrastructure. So in the case of an Evo Rail or an Evo Rack appliance, that's VMware. So you interface with VMware to provision the hardware, vision your storage, and handle your networking. And these Nutanix are the same thing, Nutanix. And so these two pieces are sort of steps in the, in the ladder that gets us into a state where we're going to be in a fully software-defined infrastructure. But like I said, at the same time, our traditional infrastructure is not gonna go away, necessarily. Uh, but each individual of these sets of converged infrastructure, hyper, hyper converged infrastructure are gonna allow you to take advantage of purpose-built systems. So for example, if you know you need to have uh, a series of virtual machines and you only need to exist in a, in a virtual machine world, 
then a hyperconverged infrastructure is going to be something that you're going to be very interested in. Uh, but if you want to gain the ability to do programmatic interfaces to a bare metal blade, you want to install OSs and give that to, to your, your internal business customers, then probably a converged infrastructure would be the right choice. But in the end, there may be a mix. So you may need to have an entire virtual infrastructure and then, of course, a piece of, a piece of converged infrastructure as well. So does SDI mean that we have to virtualize everything? Not necessarily. So like I said before, there's going to be cases where you need to have something on bare metal in order to ensure that it can get the, the best performance, the best possibility uh, of, of, of your features. So for example, like if you're doing a scale out of big data, you're gonna install your big data systems onto a set of hardware uh, uh, as, you, as you scale out. You're not gonna make those virtual machines. Uh, for the same thing, if you need to have some kind of uh, video processing system, you're gonna have graphics cards installed into a server uh, and you're gonna use those graphics cards in order to attain uh, the performance capabilities you need and that OS is gonna have to have access to that. At the same time, we have a product called Moonshot, which gives you extra low energy servers. Uh, you can fit uh, either 40 of them in a chassis or up to 180, depending upon the, the nodes you have, up to 180 servers, essentially, in a, in a 4U uh, rack unit. Um, and in that kind of a case, then you're looking at a situation where, well, you don't wanna virtualize those things because first of all, they're, they're pretty small in the first place, they're, they're low power, but they're excellent in terms of doing a series of requests like web servers. So actually all of hp.com uh, is served off of a moonshot rack. Uh, so there's one moonshot rack actually, if I recall. And there's a couple of those deployed different sites. You know, before we had a massive infrastructure of servers, of blades, of storage, and we reduced that all down to, to, uh, to one moonshot rack. And then of course, in the end, any software-defined compute and SDI has to be installed onto hardware, right? So you wanna make sure that in the end, as you move to SDI, uh, you don't lose sight of, is the hardware something that I can actually program as well, rather than just uh, the, the, the high-level interface, say from VMware or from Nutanix. So does this SDI make hardware irrelevant? Not, not at all. So again, the, the, we got some, some, the critical assets that we wanna talk about here. Uh, again, Moonshot, uh, plug in that one. <laughs> And then of course, SDI needs to sit on the hardware. In the end, the way that HP views this is that SDI is going to be a combination of all of your previous assets, uh, the converged infrastructure, your hyper-converged infrastructure, and then whatever comes next, right? Containers is the next big thing. Uh, HP is working uh, on the machine. So that's, that's also gonna be coming down the road as a part of something that's gonna integrate with your SDI. And that's gonna be programmable, that's gonna be massively scalable. So HP support for the DoD mission. Any questions from anybody? Yeah. So, no, 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 Docker, like Docker containers, LXC, uh, yeah, Rocket. Yeah. Although we do offer containers. <laughs> we, have, we have something called Ecopods, uh, which are purpose-defined infrastructure uh, built out. Uh, you can offer, it's offer two rows, I think of about eight racks. And those are for deploying in, in states where, you know, let's say you, you want to expand your data center, but you don't necessarily want to add floor space. And I think the POE of, on some of those can get down to 1.05, which far exceeds what most data centers are capable of because it's all self-contained. So key certifications that support the DoD mission. HP is, is intimately involved with the DoD. We have a number of contracts. Uh, so we understand that there are certain needs that the DOD is going to have when it comes to the certifications on not only the software, but also the hardware. So common criteria, FIFSM 40-2, DOD UCAPL, uh, TAA, uh, which hopefully all you guys are intimately familiar with, and I have had way too much familiarization with it, and of course, Section 508. Um, so here's sort of our, our layout of, of infrastructure products. So you know, in terms of our software-defined systems, we have our, our blade systems, ML, our converged system 700, our moonshot chassis, got a three par here, uh, store once, et cetera. So in terms of, when we're looking at certifications, uh, common criteria fits across the way, a check box here means that we're gonna have one or more certified products. So in terms of common criteria, across all the different areas, we have at least one or more common criteria certified products. We also support FIPS across our portfolio. DoD UCAPL, we're primarily focused in the networking region with our DoD UCAPL. TAA across the portfolio, and then of course Section 508 across the portfolio. So not only does it mean our individual products supply those, those certification levels, but also our converged systems products and our hyper-converged systems products provide that level of, uh, level of certification. 
So one of the final things here in terms of our key contracts, HP is a major holder of DoD contracts. Uh, we interface a lot with DISA. We have the DISA capacity services for compute. So anything that goes into a deck, it goes on an HP uh, blade or an HP rack server. Uh, primarily they're focused on HP blades. Capacity for services, our partner with WWT. We just won the ESS2 contract and that's for 3PAR and XB7. Uh, the capacity services communications contract. HP again has that contract. We provide HPN, Juniper, Cisco, et cetera, networking services. Uh, the complied, the assured compliance assessment solution, ACAS, that's actually a contract run out of Herndon here, here in uh, Virginia. Uh, and we provide the uh, support and licensing for the ACAS software, which is really just tenable security center, right? Uh, so if any base needs to install and, and set up ACAS, they contact our guys in Herndon, they have a reference architecture, they help them work out any issues. And finally, of course, the, the next, Navy Next Gen network engine, we provide blades, DLs, networking, and storage on that contract. So we have a wide array of, of interface into the DOD, uh, supporting the DOD mission, uh, and like I mentioned before, a part of the whole uh, certification effort. So really our, our call to action here, and I know I was kind of flying through some of those, uh, so <clears throat> I'll probably get you out of here early, but what we're looking here for to, to help you in your, new, your journey to new style of IT, uh, we wanna make sure that you consider people in process, not just technology. So you can't really hoist SDI on, on an on a entity, on an IT shop that isn't ready for it. So one of the things that we do have is a HP a transformational experience workshop. And that can get all of your, your C-levels together and get some consensus on, you know, what are you really looking for? Are you looking to, to enable uh, hyperconvergence or, or, or converged system type level systems? Or are you really looking to, to optimize your, your SA to, to serve to serve a role? Uh, or are you just really optimizing your, your IT help desk? Is that, is that where your main problem is? So it's maybe you know, cloud in the end, SDI, isn't the answer to everything. Uh, sometimes it can be a matter of, of working out your current processes and getting everybody on board and heading on the same direction. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have a number of solutions available, uh, HP OneView, uh, Store Virtual VSA, SDN, Helion Cloud, which are all available actually for free. You can go obtain those from the HP website and test them out. Uh, and that's really it. So, uh, again, I'm Doug Gebert. Uh, if you need to check out any of the HP certified products, uh, it's hp.com slash go slash fed certs. Uh, we list all of our certified products on there. So if you know something's FIPS, uh, Common Criteria, DoD UC APL, we have it there for you. Uh, Section 508 stuff, uh, hp.com, HP info about HP accessibility. You can check all of our 508 uh, VPATs there if you need them. Uh, and then of course, if you have any TAA questions, just contact your sales rep and uh, we'll, we'll figure it all out for you. <laughs>